Hey guys, so Mr. Oz, the enigma that has been plaguing Action Comics and Detective Comics since the beginning of Rebirth, his identity has been finally revealed and it turns out to be Jor-El, Superman's biological father. So my thoughts on this reveal is a little bit mixed. On one hand, I'm very, very surprised, but on the other hand, I'm very, very disappointed because I expected somebody else. In fact, the guesses that I've made on who this character was who I thought this character was going to be was Ozymandias for obvious reasons, uh, pre New 52 Lex Luthor, New 52 Superman, or Superboy Prime. But since I'm completely wrong, I owe a shit ton of people money. However, this reveal presents us with a shit ton of questions, questions that I feel needs to be answered or at least addressed. So for this video, I'm only going to point out four very important questions and kind of explain why each question is pretty important. But I'm not going to mention the obvious ones like, oh, how he survived or what his actual plan is, because I feel like those those questions are obviously going to be answered. So addressing them here is kind of pointless because we already know they're going to be answered. If not, then what's the point of the reveal? And also, what's the point of the event that's happening in Action Comics? But with that being said, let's get down to the questions. Number one, why does Kryptonite not have any effect on Jor-El? Right, so we all know what Kryptonite does to a Kryptonian, and no matter what universe it is, the effects of Kryptonite has relatively been the same in every universe. In the latest issue of Action Comics, we see Mr. Oz pull out the Kryptonite heart, I think, from Metallo. Now, to be fair, he does it with his staff, but he does pull the Kryptonite towards his face, and it, for some reason, it doesn't do anything to him. Judging on the covers of the next Action Comics issues, we are given the impression that Dr. Manhattan is the reason why Jor-El is still alive. If I had to guess, maybe Dr. Manhattan manipulated Jor-El's biology to get him to be immune to kryptonite. At that point, the question would have to be, why would he do this? But let's just say that that isn't the case. Then you could say that maybe the New 52's version of kryptonite has no effect on Jor-El. Well, like I mentioned before, kryptonite in no matter any universe will always affect a kryptonian. For example, in the previous issue of Action Comics, Lex Luthor, while being under-controlled, he used kryptonite needles to take down pre-New 52 Superman. This confusion actually leads me into my second question, which is, which version of Jor-El is this? It's important to note that this Jor-El could either be from Earth Prime or Prime Earth, considering Rebirth only affects those two particular universes. However, we don't have a lot of information on this yet. But it could give us insight on Jor-El's actions during Rebirth and why Dr. Manhattan created the New 52 universe. However, there's also the potential chance that this is not Jor-El, which could actually answer my previous question on why the Kryptonite didn't work on Jor-El. However, this is all speculation and we're not entirely sure on what direction they're taking with this story. So far, all they've been leaving us, the readers, is just breadcrumbs here and there, so I guess we'll just have to wait. Number three, Tim Drake and the other captives. I'm aware that this will be answered in Detective Comics, and even though I'm not caught up with that series yet, that does not mean that it's a question not worth answering. Tim Drake hasn't been in action for, I believe, almost a year, and the last time we saw him was during the Mr. Mixoplick event. Since then, he's been radio silent. But luckily for us, they're going to explain Tim Drake and him escaping from wherever he was imprisoned in the next Detective Comics issue, though I will have to say that I'm more curious about the other prisoners. So far, the ones that we know that have been captured were Mr. Mixoplick, Doomsday, more specifically the post-crisis version of Doomsday, Prophecy from the Multiplicity storyline, and Tim Drake. But what about the others? What about the one Jor-El captured before Rebirth, back in New 52 Superman, I think it was number 34? So far, they rarely gave any hints on who this mysterious prisoner is, but that doesn't stop us, the readers, from speculating who this person is. The first person that comes into my mind is Booster Gold, more specifically the New 52 version. Only because he is a time traveler, then again, they're all time travelers, all the Booster Golds from separate universes. And 
time anomalies is sort of their thing. And if you think about it, someone like that would pose a serious threat to anyone trying to manipulate the DC Universe timelines. Also, we have yet to see him in Rebirth. In fact, I don't think I've barely saw him in New 52 neither. That's why I pointed out the New 52 version and not like pre-New 52 or any other universe version of Booster Gold. Speaking about people we haven't seen, there's also Martian Manhunter, Shazam, The Spectre, Con L, both my spirit animal and the shitty version from the future, Bart Allen, Solstice, and there's many, many more missing. So maybe there's a chance that the mysterious prisoner is one of these guys, I don't know. But I'm just pointing out so far the ones that have been missing that really stand out, to me at least. Now there's two characters I want to make note of before I move on to the last question. The first one being Ray Palmer. The idea of him being a prisoner doesn't seem right to me because back in Rebirth number one, we see Ray tell Ryan that he is trapped in the microverse. Now, if Ray turns out to be the prisoner, that would mean either two things. Jor-El has trapped the entirety of the microverse or the location where Tim Drake and the other prisoners are held within is actually in the microverse. I sincerely do not think that Jor-El has captured the entirety of the microverse or that the place that he's located is within the microverse. But again, that's just speculation. And the second character is Tim Drake from Future's End. Towards the end of that event, Tim takes up the mantle of Batman Beyond, and towards the end of that series, before Rebirth, he gives back the mantle to Terry McGinnis, then he just disappears. And we have heard nothing of him since. The reason that I'm mentioning him is because, according to Dan Jurgens, the current writer of Action Comics, he said in an interview that his disappearance is related to the imprisonment of current day Tim Drake. Now, I wouldn't say Future Tim is the mysterious prisoner because there is a huge possibility that the current day Tim, you know, the fact that he almost died and he is still in, in prison probably means that Future Tim does not exist until there is certainty that the current day version of him will survive all of this. But again, that's just speculation, but I strongly don't think that Mr that the mysterious prisoner is future Tim Drake. But anyway, that is a question that needs to be answered, the mystery behind the mysterious prisoner, where they're located, and all this other stuff. But let's move on to the last question, which is number four, is Jor-El working for Dr. Manhattan or against him? So we're all pretty much well aware that Dr. Manhattan is responsible for the time discrepancies for the DC universe, or at least that's what they're trying to build towards. I'm also pretty sure Jor-El is aware of Dr. Manhattan's existence and what he did, but the question is, is Jor-El working for Dr. Manhattan or is he working towards his own goals? This question is important because it could tie into Dr. Manhattan's justifications. And what I mean by justifications is more like why exactly did he create the New 52? This can also give us an insight on what probably is Dr. Manhattan's plans, because I'm pretty sure he has a plan. It's not like he just felt like created the New 52 and that would be the end of it. No, there's a reason why he tried to kill Zoom. There's a reason why he retrieved back the button. There's a reason why he took Wally West out of the equation. And by Wally West, I mean pre-New 52 Wally West, not um this guy. There's a reason why he took 10 years of memories away from everyone. This all has to lead to something. Now, what I believe is if Jor-El is working with Dr. Manhattan, this could give us some insight on Dr. Manhattan's actions and what his plan might be. If not, then I can only think that he's working against him considering how much of a damage he's done to his family, more specifically his son's family. You know, Superman, Lois Lane, Jonathan Kent, those guys. But that's really it. That's all the questions that I have and I feel need to be addressed. What are your guys' opinions so far? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, the next video I plan on making is Marvel Generations, so look out for that. I'm not gonna say that I'm back because every time I do, I make two more videos and I'm gone for another two months or four or six, I don't fucking know. So I'm not gonna jinx it. But anyway, see you guys in the next video. Take care.